for me, I think it does depend on really what path you're taking. Typically, if you're going to kind of programming and development path, I think it's definitely more advantageous to have projects that you can d demonstrate and really what you've done more experience in the field of networking, there seems to be a much greater focus on certification. There's a really kind of clear path as to how to advance your career. You've got associate level, professional, expert, much more focused. Whereas I think if you prefer the software side, that is a thing. We do have Python certifications, but I don't think it's quite as important as, say, for example, networking or perhaps cybersecurity. I don't know what you guys may think on that. But I think depending on the technology, if I see someone have the certification, that tells me that you took the time yeah. to go on a journey and go on this journey and learn new technology or, or new skills and obtain that certification. So often when I see someone apply for a job and they have that certification, that at least tells me that you took the time to do that, which, you know, it's a big plus yeah. for me. Yeah. So jumping off of both of those ideas, I think it's really interesting. I'm more in the data science, so programming with data science. And it's not as common to have programming and, and data certifications, but there are programmers that do have a ton of certifications. And I think that's because it, it's they're aiming at a company or at a job or something specific. But the one thing that I do want to add to kind of spin this up is that with uh, data analytics or data plus in this case, that certification definitely is going to say, do what Lala said, right? So it's going to show the employer that you care and that you've, demonstrated your skills. But here's the takeaway that I think is really important for data analysts and data scientists or aspiring data practitioners. When you take the data plus, it's going to fill in gaps, so many gaps. It's a very, very wide, broad band of skills and, and topics where most online and even curriculum and universities really are very, very focused, more online learning than anything else. So the data plus is a really awesome way to get from like A to Z. Right, and that's some, 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 something very rare that I that I'm really excited about Data Plus because it does something unusual. So that's my two cents there. I would also add that I do think that with respect to certifications, it can be a great way to get your foot in the door. Sometimes you can't get that experience for someone to hire you unless you can somehow validate some form of skill set that you know. Certifications are a great way to do that, and once you have that, then you can get the experience, and that can really really set you off on a good path. Yeah, especially when you're new to IT, it's about laying or building that foundation. And these certifications are great to help you build that foundation so you can advance in your career and get that job that you want or to get that promotion. This, it really, this does depend on the type of field where your interest is. Me, myself, I really like network automation. So in network automation, the big space is really to use Python. There's a huge amount of Python libraries to handle this. But if you are interested in, say, web development, perhaps you might be better served looking at JavaScript or something. It really does depend on what your focus is, where your interest lies. I can't give you an absolute answer. I will say that Python is a very good language overall because it does have so many applications. Though. So that's a good bet, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be the path you go. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> this is great. Um, my background, I came from full stack uh, development and then to uh, data science. And so what, you know, what John was saying is interesting. If you're going to really focus to a job that's going to be uh, engineering web development, JavaScript is used in the front end and the back end. So it might make sense to do that. But if you're asking me for uh, data science, it's Python. Absolutely. It's the lingua franca of machine learning. And that's exactly why you would learn that. And it's if you consider a PHP or any of these other languages, it's very uh, human readable. It's designed for people. It was a concerted effort to make it very, very uh, easy to read and to work with. So <laughs> it's perfect for beginners, you know, especially if you're interested in data. That's very interesting. Uh, as many technologies, the underlying foundation is networking. So originally when I first went after my certifications, I did the CC voice and the collaboration and then um, I was intrigued, right? So when I plugged my network cable into the switch, what happened there? So would I say that you need it? You need it? You may not, but to be a better engineer and to further enhance your skills and to build your skill set, it's a perfect complement that to have both because then it just takes you to the, the next level. So, um, and again, I'm, I know I'll talk about vibration now, but any technologies, you also need that underlying networking. So to understand that can only make you there. 
Yeah. So a good example would be, I've, I used to uh, be an instructor and help people get jobs, right? And so one of the things that was super valuable is when a student was interviewing. So you can think of this in two ways. One, if it's specific for a job, you know, or if it's just general data awareness or data practitioners or data analytics or data science. So we got a lot of feedback uh, about uh, learners or students trying to get jobs. What came back was, wow, you have a great foundation in data analysis, or you have a great foundation in, in this one area, but how about this area or this area? So there's a lot of gaps. And the reason is data science and data analytics is a very, very wide field because not only is it programming, you're dealing with databases. Not only is it databases, you're talking to the front of the house. You're talking, making business decisions here or making presentations. So it is pretty wide. And so I would say it's absolutely worth it because not only does it show your employer that you can actually do the things that you demonstrate the skills, but it gives you a much better understanding of the big picture. So you get a question, uh, you take data plus, and then you go to an interview question, chances are it's gonna be covered, right? So I think that's the takeaway. Yes, so AI is a big umbrella term. You have uh, machine learning, and then there's deep learning. So think of it like this. Machine learning is a process of automating, uh, I'm gonna say tagging, so you don't need to know what that means, but it makes it a lot faster. Whereas before, experts had to actually manually do this, you know, enter it in all that detail. So it's very expensive. Machine learning automates that process, which is amazing. It just makes the process, what used to take months or years, really, uh, it could take a couple hours now. So the way that it also fits into data science is machine learning is able to identify patterns that humans cannot see. So imagine the value there for a company or for actually it's a, it's a, this is something that sort of interferes or sort of crosses the different domains. So this is a good panel um, in regard to, to data science and AI. So <laughs> the future of AI, right? It's like, we, we, I think all three of us here would have as much knowledge of what's gonna happen with AI in five years because it's never happened before. This is something that you have no historical reference right. and the brightest minds in the field, and I'm not putting myself there, I'm definitely relentless when it comes to working with this, but the very, very best of the best also don't have an idea. So that's kind of my answer. I would definitely love to talk about the, the, the different avenues that we can talk about. What do you think, yeah, Mark? I mean, as far as in the collaboration umbrella, you know, there are products out there that if someone calls into a call center and they're upset, they can sense that, right, using the app, using AI and then route that call, it may be an agent like John who's more uh, sensitive or more better. And I mean, just to route that call appropriately so they have a happy customer, all, I mean, that's great when you can use the technology and AI in that way. Yeah, I think one of the most exciting parts of AI and stuff like chat GPT for me is the ability for it to enhance learning. That's a big thing about what I'm interested in. So say for example, you want to learn Linux and you don't know how to set anything up, you can just say, hey, chat GPT, pretend you are a Linux terminal. And when I type in this command, give me the command you would output if you were a Linux machine. So now someone who doesn't know how to set up a virtual machine can have access to a Linux terminal in their phone, just pull out their pocket and begin learning. They can have chat GPT, ask them questions about what they've learned to really, you know, improve what they've really practiced, what they're, they're learning, so I think. Learning for me is a big, big thing, and I think that's the thing that really excites me about AI. But as far as the future goes, I think what Jonathan said is absolutely correct. It's so hard to predict. It's accelerating at such a rate that, you know, maybe in five years, um, it will be unrecognizable. I do want to add, you brought up something super interesting, and I got to take this opportunity now that we're talking to the learners here. Uh, when you're when you mentioned learning, mm -hmm. so what people are doing with AI, there's two things that's happening. One, they try to trick the AI. Two, they ask for, give me all this code and then I'll copy and paste it. So I do want to say one thing. Really, the most powerful thing, uh, I don't know what's going to happen in five years, but I do know that it's a tutor. That, that what John said, talk to me like you're a Linux terminal. Talk to me like you're this. That's really the value. And I really wanted to put that out there because the data is out there saying that people are using it for these other uh, avenues, which makes sense. I did that too. But if you want to use it as a tutor, I think that's really where you're going to get the return on your investment. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in an IT career or looking to brush up your IT skills, check out cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.